So many of the uh, challenges that me and Max do are so dependent on right or left foot. My dominant foot is the right foot and Max's is his left foot. So there's so many challenges that we find that it's like, oh, that's ideal for a left footer. Drop in the comments if you're a left foot takeoff. The reason Max prefers to jump off his left foot is that when he travels forward, his center of gravity tends to rest too far left. And the muscles on the left side of his torso who have the job of taking him left don't have very much to do. And the muscles on the right side of his torso that have the job of taking him right have a lot to do because he's basically traveling between left, his resting position, and pulling to the right. And so as a result, he's very good at using the muscles on the right side of his torso. And so when he jumps off his left leg, it's very easy for him to lift up his right hip with his right side of torso muscles. They have a very good action and he finds that he can control that movement very well. When he jumps off his right foot and he lifts his left side, he finds that he cannot lift his left hip up very well and he cannot adjust or balance that position very well. So it will feel awkward and clunky and heavy. And I'm sure this feeling is very familiar to a lot of left foot or right foot jumpers. The wrong foot just feels wrong. And there's a reason why that is, it's not random. Now, there's a lot to unpack in that. And the reason I picked this topic in particular is not because Max is doing a really bad job at it, but rather that this is super common. I would say two out of every three people watching this video do something really similar. There are far more left foot jumpers than right foot jumpers. And this is usually correlated with handedness. Right handers jump off left foot. Left handers jump off right foot. And this pattern is not always true, but largely true. And it's easy to test this for ourselves. So if you have a camera, what I'd recommend doing is going and filming yourself standing on one foot and standing on the other foot and having a look at the difference between those two movements. So pause the video for a second so you're not biased by what I tell you next and then we'll come back and discuss. So standing on your left foot, odds are it looked a little bit like this. And on your right foot, it looked a little bit like this. And what's going on there is that as you're traveling onto the left side, your weight is tending to lean across and park on that left side. And as you travel to the right side, that right sided torso activation is giving you a much better pull. You're traveling across on your right hip your right glute med muscle is working and your whole torso is coming across almost like you're standing down into a hole. And sometimes if you go to see an osteopath, they might misdiagnose you and say, oh, you've got a longer left leg than a right. But what we're really seeing here is that same pattern that's happening with Max. If he were to stand on one foot, you would probably see similar results. And you can see that in his walking here. This way we move between our legs is shared in all movements. The way we walk becomes the way we jog, becomes the way we run, becomes the way we stride. This pattern, this way of shifting our weight or this park left into a pull right, is through all of our movement, not just isolated to one context. Now the effect of this is that most people end up only being able to stabilize on one side of the torso and all of their movement becomes defined by this. They can only vault one way, turn one way, flip one way, which is a great way to develop injuries, overuse problems, and really limits our ability to do parkour in an interesting dynamic way because we're always trying to find things that are on our good side. Which is not to say that biological preference doesn't exist, like that exists in all developed animals basically, even kangaroos prefer left hand over right. But this should not be a limitation, but rather a choice. We should be able to do both, maybe not exactly as well, but pretty close to that. And you find in really good athletes, people who rest with their weight very centrally tend to be very good on both sides. They still have a preference, but they're able to do both as well as each other because they're constantly practicing pulling to the left and to the right, stabilizing both left and right. And the opposite is also true with the worst athletes that I see. People who are most dependent on doing things only on their good side tend to have the least central resting position. And as a result, have very, very imbalanced movements, predispose themselves to injury. If you're one of those people who find you can only do something on one side, that's a very, very good sign that you're not resting in a central position at all. So what does this look like in movement? So simple things like walking, jogging, running, small strides. It'll kind of look like you have a swagger where you get a very strong pull contraction to the right side of your body and then more of a collapse lean back to the left. And this pattern will carry through into basically everything that you do. And this will cause a bunch of problems. Let's say you're doing a technical stride line. I've got Max as an example here. What you'll find is that if Max is falling to the left, no worries, he can pull himself back to the right. What happens when he's falling to the right? He's got to fall off because he can't easily recorrect back to that left side. And this won't always be the case for him, but it's much more often than not. The skill in particular that they struggle with is lifting their left hip up to the left shoulder. People are often okay at going down to the left side, but lifting left hip up to left shoulder is where people run into the most trouble. And you can see this manifest in a lot of different movements. So people who jump off their left foot tend to prefer to twist left. And the reason is what that movement entails is taking your right shoulder and chest away to the right. And then once you've taken your chest there, bringing your hip back to your shoulder, so to speak. And then when you go to twist right, what happens is that you're taking your left shoulder forward and it's very hard for you to bring your left hip back to your left shoulder in space. It's like once they drift apart, you're not really good at putting those pieces back together again, especially bringing the left hip back to the left shoulder. Nowhere near as well as you can do it on the right side. 
So you tend to always do it the way you know how to do it. And this can make you very unstable in strides as we saw before, but it can also cause other problems. So if you're doing a return and it's much safer to turn right, but you can only turn left, you'll choose to turn left. So an example of Max here doing a return that really should be done to the right, he's doing it left. As he pulls up, what you'll notice is that he brings his right hip up to his right shoulder, bringing those two points closer together. Then he turns his right shoulder away, bringing them further apart again. And then he brings his right hip back to his right shoulder, completing the twist again. And this is how most people who jump off their left foot would do a return. And it's really for the same reason as jumping off the left foot. Everything still applies, but he's taking off his right foot. So it's not that it's inherently taking off right or left foot, but rather how you're stabilizing and using your body that results in your movement abilities. Now, this also has other downsides. Let's say in the air that you are starting to lose stability and you need to stabilize yourself. What is that gonna look like? In Max's case, he has a very distinctive bail in which he contracts on his right side and his right chest leads, and he ends up almost losing balance and falling over. And you can see this happen again and again and again. Another way to think of this left lean is actually his right chest is leading. His right chest is coming across and onto his left side as his center of gravity travels forward and left. And so when he's doing a movement, it'll often have the quality or the feeling as if it's being led by his right chest and a constant stretching and recontracting on that right side there. So if you look at this line here, you can see again and again and again, the same movement pattern repeating itself. This predisposes him to a number of injuries, especially on this right knee as he's landing. He's getting a lot of rotational forces in through that knee. And you can see this in a lot of his landings, you see this same twist down in as that right chest comes across and he pulls in through that right side. Now, the nice thing about this pattern is that it's in some ways very predictable. The same things are happening for the same reasons. And if you're like Max and a lot of you watching are, this pattern is super prevalent, not exactly the same, but similar. And the commonalities can be easily tested and observed for yourself in a mirror or on camera. So you don't have to speculate about this. What I would recommend people to do is learn to do things as well on both sides, starting with standing in a mirror and learning to stand on your left side, the same as your right, and then taking that into your walking gait, your running gait, and slowly scaling up the complexity of the movements, trying to do a 180 twist on the wrong side, a return on the wrong side, and teach your nervous system how to use this left side as well as the right. Part of that is going to be about centralizing your weight position. So for people who lean left, like Max, it means leaning and taking your center of gravity a bit right, leading the movement with your left chest. This is gonna feel super odd. It'll feel like you're leaning right because part of the problem, part of what makes it so hard to address or to see these things is that for Max, it feels normal. Being left and forward or leading with his right chest just feels like centered to him. So yeah, anything that can get you feeling the use of these bottom lower muscles on your torso, especially your left lats, and getting you bringing your left hip up to your left shoulder and lengthening that and then bringing it back is gonna be super useful for helping you improve your movement abilities and do things well, prevent injuries, stabilize your position, and hopefully move at a higher level for longer. Anyway, thanks guys. Next week, I've got something planned already, but leave a comment anyway for some algorithm love. Peace out.